Thank you, Myra. It's a pleasure talking to you again. And I'm, thank you very much for inviting me here today. I'll bring up our presentation, if I may, and we'll start with that. Okay, this is a slide uh, looking towards the west from the central part of Sera Caliche project. Uh, and uh, I'll go into the location momentarily, but uh, way in the distance, uh, you would, uh, uh, beyond the furthest ridge is the San Francisco mine. Off to the right of the picture is the neighboring Cerro Prieto mine. Mercedes mine is over my left shoulder by about seven kilometers to the southeast on, on the same structure. And Santa Gertrudis with Agnico Eagle is to the, the north over my right shoulder by 14 kilometers. And uh, let me start off with our technical team first of all, because uh, we have a management team that has collectively the, the top four people have you know, 180, 200 years of experience uh, in the mining sector. Uh, John Darch and I both have, have been involved with uh, the funding and management of resource companies all over the world uh, and have been doing so for over 35, actually closer to 40 years now. Uh, Melvin Herdrick, our geologist and uh, vice president of exploration, he has over 45 years experience. He was former head of exploration in Mexico for Phelps Dodge. Uh, he joined Pediman Gold and was one of the, uh, of the key uh, management managers that were responsible for, for developing uh, two large deposits, the, the San Antonio deposit on the Baja Peninsula and the, the, the La Colorado deposit, the new deposit at La Colorada, which eventually uh, was, they were both acquired. Uh, when Pediment Gold was acquired by Argonaut Gold in 2011. Uh, and uh, Jorge Diaz, our mining engineer, based uh, also in Hermosillo. Uh, both of them are based in Hermosillo. Uh, he was, he's got over 40 years experience, started off with Peñoles. He was the number one employee of uh, Alamos Gold when they started constructing the Mulatos mine. So he has very much uh, a hands-on experience uh, over the past 40 years. Location-wise, I don't have to teach anybody about the location of Magdalena de Quino. Uh, we're about 45 minute drive uh, from Magdalena to the Southeast. Uh, and it's uh, very close to the town of Cucurpe, three hours drive to, to Tucson, three hours drive to Hermosillo. Now we acquired the project in January, starting in January, 2018. There was some historic mining done. There was uh, at least seven maybe nine uh, old historic uh, mine sites uh, there uh, that were operated in the early 1900s to the mid 1900s. And in recent history, uh, Cambior came in and did some exploratory drilling in, uh, in the early 1990s, and, uh, but they didn't pursue it at that time. Uh, then in 2007, Orex Gold, which is now Minera Alamos, uh, they drilled approximately 8,000 meters of drilling <laughs> and uh, they, at that time, money was tight, so they focused on their other projects. Uh, in 2011, a company called uh, Paget Southern drilled approximately 2,000 meters, and they ran out of money, <clears throat> which meant that we eventually ended up with all the data from these two prior operators, <clears throat> and it gave us a really good understanding of uh, the structure and what we would expect with our drilling program. So at that time, there was a total of 10,000 meters of drilling uh, when we acquired the project. And we are now up to 47,500 meters of drilling. <clears throat> and of course, we've, we've spread the drilling uh, uh, throughout uh, a fair part of the project, but it's fair to say at this point that the, that the, um, the, the narrow, uh, narrow um, uh, focus on the drilling has been in the central zone, the Japonesas, the Buena Suerte, and even off to the west of Cabeza Blanca. And that is where the majority of the resource is. So 47,500 meters of drilling, 80% or 85% would be in this central zone. But the potential for additional mineralization in the outlying zones are now starting to be realized as we continue with the drilling program. I want to give you a quick snapshot of the uh, ease of which uh, this can be mined. We've got a, a few sections for you here. Off in the west, uh, you have the Cabeza Blanca zone, and you're essentially starting with uh, mineralization at surface. And so the um, strip ratio is very, very low. Same with the Buena Suerte zone. 
And the same with the, the Hapanesa Cuervo zone as well. This is a cross section across these various zones. And you have the vein breccia zones. Uh, and in, in between the various vein breccia zones, you have the stock work and it's all essentially mineable. <clears throat> so as we're going forward now, we're currently, this is the drill program that we're embarking on now. We started uh, drilling in late November with a focus on developing approximately 10,000 meters of new drilling with this program. And we've identified areas where there's been uh, no, uh, no credit given for a resource because of the insufficient uh, drilling density. For example, Guadalupe, they, we had four holes in that Guadalupe zone, but they were not closely spaced enough to be able to quantify a resource. Uh, you got uh, Española, the same thing as well, and El Rincón. So our goal right now is A, to take these zones that have been identified as being mineralized and, and convert them into a resource over the coming year or so. So what we had, we in um, October of uh, 2021, we released a resource estimation conducted by MICON uh, out of their Toronto office and uh, a, a PEA, which was done by Denim Engineering out of Ontario, Canada as well. And in the estimate of uh, resource by MICON, they in the, within the pit zones that you see here in the dark shading, uh, they, pro they processed uh, approximately 31.5 million tons with an average gold grade of 0.41 grams. Uh, when you add in the silver, which is a very small component, the grade increases slightly to uh, uh, 0.44 gold equivalent. And so in the, uh, in the calculations, they came up with um, a total of 420,000 mineable ounces, uh, and of which uh, with a 74% recovery rate, you're producing in the order of somewhere around 330,000 ounces. And I'll go into that momentarily. But what's interesting to me is the areas shown in gold where there's been sufficient drilling to enable Micon to say there's, uh, there's mineralized potential there, but the spacing was not close enough to be able to quantify a resource. So they're estimating up to uh, 365,000 additional ounces in these particular zones. And we feel that uh, we feel very confident that uh, these numbers can be achieved over the, in the, with a drilling program over the coming year. And I think we, we've gone into other areas that are not shown in this map here that are demonstrating great signs of additional mineralization. The structure within uh, the, the Cedro Calichic concession is typically uh, running in a northwesterly direction, which is, which is uh, similar to what you have in the Sonora Mojave Megashir to the west as well. And you have the Sierra Madre Occidental approximately 100 yeah. kilometers to the east. Uh, the PEA came up with uh, uh, what we consider to be uh, um, financeable uh, project. Uh, if you take uh, uh, um, uh, the estimate of 15,000 tons a day throughput uh, over uh, 345 days a year, it yields approximately uh, a gross ounces of, of 80,000 ounces of gold. And when you take your recovery rate of 74%, uh, you average out to over a seven-year mine life, as currently stands, approximately 50,000 ounces a year. And in the first three years, we have identified areas of higher grade near surface that we can effectively mine and be able to uh, speed up the, the uh, payback of capital. And so we are estimating 56,000 ounces in the first three years. It'll drop down to between 45 and 50,000 ounces in years four to seven, assuming we do not do any additional drilling, but that's not the case. We are drilling as we speak right now. We will continue to drill uh, for the foreseeable future with the goal of, of multiplying the size of the, of the resource over the coming two years. Now, based upon this 15,000 ton per day throughput, uh, we have a capital cost currently uh, of $32 million US. And the, the goal is uh, to really chip away at this capital cost and see how we can economize on, on, on some of the elements within the, the PEA, within the, the, the mine plan to cut the capital cost down. And to, we, we will take a, a good hard stab at that now. But as it stands, base, the base case is, as, it, as you see on here, the IRR is currently 32% and the, and the net present value after both after tax is $41.5 million. 
So currently we're showing payback at just over two years. And based upon all these numbers, uh, the cash cost over the life of mine of seven years currently are $1,227. They will be reduced in the first uh, three years because of the higher grade. So the cash costs come down. And our goal is to keep on maintaining, uh, uh, reducing those cash costs so that we could become even more competitive over time. The mine plan, which has been put into place now, it shows the, the main pit shells that uh, I showed you in the earlier slide with, uh, as generated by MICON. And over time, we will be drilling in between these, uh, open, open, these pit shells that are currently are slightly uh, disparate and that we will be drilling in between. And the goal is to uh, obviously uh, coalesce these uh, these open pits into one large open pit and maybe two two or three large open pits. Uh, the leach pad area <coughs> has been identified and uh, we've staked it out and it's it's ready for construction when the time comes. The waste dump has been identified uh, and we've done some condemnation drilling there. And so going forward now, uh, what we are looking for in um, based upon the success of, of the past three years of drilling, uh, we've with over 47,500 meters of drilling. Uh, we have um, uh, the MET testing has yielded 74% of the gold. And uh, it is um, the that was based on, on column leach testing over 90 days. The MET testing also showed with a bottle roll recovery of 80.3%. Uh, we're very comfortable with stating 74% is conservative. And uh, we have completed the environmental studies, preliminary engineering design. And now we're heading into the new zone. We're heading towards construction. And the goal for us over the next uh, few months is to, or over the next month or so, is to submit the MIA to Samarnat for approval and if and the change of land use. So, so that is, uh, the, the MIA is ready for submission. We're just waiting to sign the final agreement for the land use with the rancher that controls the surface rights. Uh, at the same time, we will proceed with the detailed mine engineering. Uh, we're in the process right now, putting the team together to and get engaged in, in the mine engineering. Project finance, uh, we have been dealing with uh, various financial institutions uh, over the past few months that have identified that they would be quite prepared to support us on the, on the basis of a preliminary economic assessment on certain subject to certain conditions, as you can well imagine. So we will be proceeding with the negotiations on the project finance. And by the time that the MIA has been approved by uh, Samarnat, uh, we expect to have the project finance fully in place. And so I'll give you a snapshot of uh, the schedule of events to get us to our destination in, in uh, 2023, in the first quarter. <clears throat> and currently, drilling is expected to, to be completed uh, sometime in April, Mar maybe at the end of March, early April. At that point, we will decide whether we're going to continue with the drilling uh, and, uh, or whether we wait until we have the, the uh, project finance in place, and then we continue with the drilling program. So once we have that drilling completed, which will be somewhere between seven and 10,000 meters, we will update the resource estimation at that point. <clears throat> now, I'm assuming right now that the, the MIA, the time to approve the MIA will be somewhere between six and nine months. So I'm estimating currently by the month of August that uh, we anticipate having the, the MIA uh, in place and ready for a project, close of project financing and start construction. And the goal for the company, for goal for our entire team is to start loading the leach pad in the first quarter of, of 2023 and start generating revenues in the, in the second quarter of 2023. And so far, uh, uh, the, we've been very, very successful with A or drilling program. They, <clears throat> we have a team in uh, Hermosillo that is working on the engineering. And so we have uh, a major Mexican component. In fact, uh, it's 90% Mexican component for for the professionals that are working on the project right now. Uh, and uh, so I'm very happy to say that uh, we intend to keep uh, as much Mexican involvement in the project as is humanly possible. There's very little requirement for outside uh, influences to be brought to bear, except uh, when it comes to project finance. 
So as a company, it's been uh, obviously uh, w- working on the Cedar Caliche project now for four years, actually three years, started in 2018. Uh, and um, we, we've we been uh, <clears throat> very successful in raising capital. We raised about uh, $15 million, <clears throat> A, for property payment, B, for the, the work program, the drilling program. And uh, so 85% of that money has gone into uh, the, the program, the, the exploration program. And now we're ready to start capitalizing on, on the, the resource we have de- developed to date. Uh, the company uh, is owned as to over 20% by insiders all the way from the, you know, the, the chairman, me as president, all the way down to, uh, to uh, the, the geologists in the field. We're all, uh, we're all heavily involved in, in ownership in, in this company here with a focus on, on bring it to, bringing it to production uh, in the latter part or the or the early part of 2023, <clears throat> so that summarizes uh, the story of uh, Sonoro, and uh, I'd like to um, suggest that uh, I'm available for question and answer over the next five minutes, according to what I've been told. Um, the first one is: What do you consider to be the most difficult part of moving from an exploration company to a production company? That is an excellent question. Well, it's a different mentality uh, that is involved in the development of an exploration company and making the giant leap forward to to a uh, production company. Uh, So we do have people within our our senior management rank, such as Jorge Diaz, that has been involved with production over the years. Uh, And we will be supplementing the technical team to take us into production, we'll be bringing in people from uh, that we know are, are very competent, whether it be in Sonora or other parts of Mexico. Uh, and we will be introducing those people to the project and building up that technical team because they, they um, obviously the, 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 the type of um, expertise that is required for a production company are very, very different from what is what is required in an exploration company. We've, we've been very satisfied with our exploration team. We're very satisfied. We're going, we have the making with the start of a, a, a um, production team, and, but, but we will be expanding upon that over the next six months. And, but it will take us time to build the entire team. Great, thank you. We do have another question. It's what are the short-term catalysts for the project? It's the most important catalyst right now is obtaining the MIA. They, we, we have, um, you know, the environmental uh, studies have uh, demonstrated uh, there are no environmental concerns that we, we found on the, on the property. Uh, and now it's a matter of uh, uh, finalizing the surface rights agreement with a rancher that controls the surface. Uh, and uh, that agreement is uh, 95% completed. We should, uh, over the coming weeks, we should be able to to finalize that. At that point, we submit the MIA, and then we hope to be able to uh, start construction later on this year. Amazing, thank you. We have space for for one more question, and this could be, how has access to financing been, and what has made it successful? Access to financing uh, has been notoriously difficult over the past few years for junior resource companies. There were periods of, of, uh, of shine, bright shining lights uh, when for a few months, uh, you know, gold was doing well or the, the junior resource sector was doing well and then you're able to raise capital. But then the, the window shuts tight again for a period of time. Over the past uh, six to eight months, I would say it's been quite difficult, but we've been very successful in raising capital even through the tough times. And uh, our last financing was done in December when, uh, you know, a lot of financings in the resource sector were being canceled because you know, just, they just were not happening. Investors were not interested, but we were successful in raising a $3 million financing and closed it in the middle of December, just before Christmas. Uh, that was a good Christmas present for us as shareholders. So um, that has been uh, difficult going forward, uh, even though gold has been uh, trading between 1800 and 1850. Uh, it still hasn't made uh, uh, financing for junior gold companies any easier. And uh, because of all the other uncertainties that are happening around the world with COVID and the, the issue in the Ukraine and the issue in the South China Sea. And so it's, it, 
people are very nervous right now. And, and most importantly, uh, COVID uh, it, it has been a, a negative factor on all of us, as you, as you very well know.